Uh, hello, welcome to episode 127 uh, of Retro Power and Cut. And you'll uh, obviously realise last week I was not here, um, and that's because I was in the States doing a bit of a automotive road trip, um, shall we say. So we started in Miami, uh, went up to Daytona to see the Daytona 500, uh, which was awesome. Not, I wouldn't say I'm a massive fan of oval racing, and I wouldn't even say the racing was particularly uh, sort of exciting racing, but it, the reason I wanted to go was just sort of experience the atmosphere and the noise and the scale of the event, and it, it did absolutely what I hoped it would do. Uh, so I really enjoyed that. Uh, and then we drove up to Atlanta, and then up to the Jack Daniels Distillery, which I highly recommended. I was very impressed with that, actually, and not, not necessarily for the reasons you'd expect. I kind of anticipated it would be very modernised and industrial, and actually it was the opposite of that, so that was, that was really nice to see. Um, and then we went up to Nashville, Indianapolis, went to the Indi Indianapolis Speedway Museum, which was great, actually. That's well worth going to as well. A uh, huge number of in Indy 500 winning cars in the museum. Uh, and then up to Chicago, and then across to a company that has been a massive inspiration to myself and Nat for quite a number of years, actually, a, a hot rod builder called Roadster Shop uh, up there. So uh, we went to see Roadster Shop. Um, I was given the tour by Chris Gray, who's um, one of their designers or their lead designer. Uh, and then was joined by Mike as well, who's the sort of lead engineer there. And uh, yeah, it was really, really interesting to see their business. In terms of the sort of hot rod build side of the business, um, not actually dissimilar to ours, a bit bigger, um, I'd say maybe three, perhaps two, three times the size, but the entire place is much bigger because the scale of their chassis uh, fabrication and uh, sort of part sales side of their business. Uh, but yeah, really, really cool to see those guys. Um, so yeah, pretty, a pretty long road trip in total, but well worth it. Uh, and yeah, we're back in the UK and actually today has been a busy day as well because we've just got back from uh, Dunsfold this morning where we were visiting uh, Gordon Murray. Um, so he's said a lot of nice things about us uh, since we built the Mark 1 Escort for him a, a couple of years ago. Um, and always been very kind to us. So we were, we've been trying to think of a, a way to thank him for that. So we uh, commissioned a bit of wall art for him, which is kind of like a laser laser cut profile of a Mark I Escort on an anodized background, which was done by Bruce Holder, who actually does quite a lot of our laser engraving. In fact, that ties in nicely with the fact that we've got the badges through now for the Stratos, uh, which were also la uh, laser engraved by Bruce. Um, but yes, it was nice to hand that over. Gordon was uh, in high spirits. We also got to see a little bit behind the scenes program on the T50 um, so it's uh, it's been a tiring but, but good couple of weeks uh, on that note I'm going to start talking about what we've been up to so starting with the Morris I've been doing the final door builds um, so I think last week uh, or the week before I'd made a start <coughs> but I still needed to do I still need to bond the glass into the lifter channels which I've now done uh, do the changes to the door cards or the cutouts in the door cards uh, for these lock mechanisms. Now we machined these quite a long while ago. Um, this little piece here, which basically allows you to manually actuate the locking from inside the car. Um, so it was just a case of cutting the leather through. We'd already cut the holes in the cards and then adjusting and tweaking the operation of those because this basically clamps onto the, the actual um, link rod between the lock and the actuator, the solenoid actuator. So it's just a case of shaping that rod so that sits perfectly onto it because the fit of this is very uh, a pretty tight tolerance in here so it hasn't got a lot of movement. Um, but yeah, that's working great. Got them both both operational. They work nicely off the press, you know, the remote control. Um, pretty much buttoned up that. I've just got to strip the card off the other side. Now I'm happy with all the operation on that and bond that glass into the lifter channel. And then that's the doors done. A little bit of buttoning up of wiring under the dash there. Um, and we are about ready to go. We're just going to stick the boot lid on and I think we can uh, tentatively take it for a bit of a drive. Um, so that's that. E-Type. Um, Adam's been on with that. Quite a few different prongs of progress. You can see the bell housing hanging in there and I think that's in there because he's been doing the clutch plumbing and we wanted to come up with the, the neatest way of routing that. Uh, originally the plumbing comes over from the master cylinder sort of across the chassis um, sub the front subframe box section and kind of loops over and down towards the bell housing and I, I didn't really want any pipes looping over that box section 
So what we've done is take, taken the pipe sort of alongside the, the frame and then actually in through the bulkhead, through an existing hole, I think it was a choke cable hole, um, and then that's then going to go across inside and out. There's a closing panel, uh, which I think is an access plate in the side of the tunnel. We're going to make a panel for that that's got a bulkhead fitting in it um, so that we can re route the clutch pipe um, nice and neatly. And actually he's been on with a few other bits of plumbing, just buttoning up, um, clipping various pipes into place. Um, he's finished the link pipe between the, uh, the main master cylinder and the remote master cylinder now. Uh, you can see he's got some of the um, tinware back in the engine bay now. It's been painted and that's because we're just scoping out the position for the fuel pressure regulator. This is all basically leading up to getting the engine in the car. Uh, and just wanting to get as many things ticked off as we can where we might need to get in access wise. Um, so we're just sussing out a position for the fuel pressure regulator. On the subject of fuel, James has done a trial fit now. You, you saw the 3D printed pieces made, which is gonna be a machined piece that goes on the fuel tank to hold the fuel pump and it has the feed and return connections on it. Uh, we've now done a full mock-up with the actual pump assembly on it to check the fitment of that all into the tank. And I think he's just working on the design of a little um, surge cup that's going to sit under that pump to make sure that the, you know, when the tank fuel's relatively low and you're cornering, braking, whatever, the fuel can't slosh away from the, the pickup. Um, the steering, you may have noticed over the last couple of weeks, it's had a scruffy, rusty looking steering rack on there. That was because that's just temporary. We've now got the uh, Mondeo steering rack conversion. Uh, so it's actually a left hand drive Mondeo rack flipped upside down. Um, with custom track rods and brackets uh, and we've just been scoping out the pump mounting it's a gm pump very similar to what you get on a chevy ls3 which is uh, mounts onto the near side of the engine um, so we've just i think it's the near side yeah so we've just been scoping out the mounting of that um, yeah essentially all leading up to getting the engine in so we're just waiting for the gearbox on that um, but it's all it's all edging forward james has also been working on the continuation of the dash so he'd done most of the upper part last time he designed the sort of billet piece that the screen and buttons are going to fit into um, uh, we made a small revision on that because we noticed and it's very very subtle but on that motec 12 inch screen the top of the casing is obviously curved but what we didn't realize is the top of the screen is actually very slightly curved as well and it doesn't look it and i think the reason they've done it is because of the top of the casing being curved probably made a straight top of the screen look curved the other way by comparison so they probably curved it slightly to make it look straight uh, but we hadn't noticed that so we've now just tweaked the drawing to make that top part uh, curved and the, therein lies the beauty of uh, prototyping in 3D print because it's very we have, you know there's no no serious money wasted in the trial and that was what brought it to our attention uh, and then he's moved on to the lower part of the dash um, so where the stereo used to be there's going to be an alpine um, sort of touchscreen nav unit um, so he's been designing, I think he'd already designed the framework last week, he's been designing this sort of sculpted piece which sort of mimics the curved vinyl surround around the original radio but, but matches it up to the shape of the Alpine unit and that's going to be a 3D print which is basically then just bonded to the aluminium framework we'll, we'll make for behind it and then the whole lot will be upholstered. Um, so yeah, lots, lots of prongs of uh, attack on that. Um, I can see also the throttle linkage is now in so that's partially the original throttle linkage and then the last part is the Genvi um, linkage that then will hook up to the Gen V heritage throttle bodies that are going onto this. So yeah, uh, good progress on that, um, moving in the right direction. And CV8, let me uh, go over here. So Bobby's now in the thick of the early stages of um, dry build essentially on this. I suspect at some point it'll probably have to go next door because quite a lot of it's going to be metalwork related. Um, last week he was getting the body all correctly fitted and aligned on the chassis done some little screw jacks at the back to, to hold it aligned um, for when they wet lay up the flange that mounts it to the chassis at the back. Next step to that was parcel shelf. Um, so we had the parcel shelf molded um, from the original body. We just needed to do the trimming and fitting of that. So that's, that's kind of trimmed to size and in place, just needs bonding to the uh, main body tub now. Uh, it's then started the build up of the door. So we've got the frames in, the glass, the window lifters, uh, the gutter trims in. Uh, essentially trying to do a last check of all the fit of all of those parts in the apertures, make sure all the gaps and everything are perfect. And then we're moving on to quite a lot of other jobs on the doors. So there are various details of the original design 
that are not really ideal, um, particularly the sealing system at the bottom of the door. And the seal essentially just pushes onto the door card, the actual trim panel, uh, and that's, that's what seals the door from the elements, uh, which is not particularly pleasing. Um, and then at the front of the door, there was various bits of wood that kind of made up the shape of it, and uh, it, it was a bit higgledy piggledy So we're going to make some nice capping pieces that sit at the front of the door. We're probably going to make some um, parts that will be chromed, which hold the door card and edge it all the way around, but also form then a metal surface for the seals to sit onto. So essentially redesigning how the trim and the sealing systems work on the door is one of the upcoming jobs. Um, but moving sort of ahead of that, we wanted to get in a position to get the bonnet off to be moulded, ready to make it in carbon. Um, and Nat mentioned last week about the fact that now we've got really tight panel gaps on it. The pivot point on the bonnet hinge is such that the very t trailing edge pivots down sort of in inside the door uh, skin and where it would have had room originally because the gap panel gaps were massive it's now just rubbing on the door skin so we're going to do like a scissor hinge arrangement that pulls the bonnet forward and up as it opens uh, and bobby's just been making a mock-up of that so he's actually just used i think there might be bmw hinges i'm not totally sure but he's used some hinges from another car as a mock-up modified them checking we could get them all in the space uh, and got them attached so we could check the motion and that all looks good so we know the dimensions of that linkage are good um, so now we've kind of got to that stage we'll actually design our own hinges but based on the dimensions of those because we know that works um, and I think we're going to possibly change the way they attach to the bonnet down here and because we're going to remake the bonnet actually box this that flange there that holds the hinge we're going to box that in so it's a more rigid structure um, and then he's going to move on to the latching mechanism. So we're going to have uh, some strikers on the underside of here and some latches, which will be under a, a sort of fabricated slam panel down here, which will also cover the radiator, etc. And then I think Nat mentioned last week that the, uh, the lever that originally unlatches the bonnet um, will become just the safety release. So it'll be a cable linkage to the strikers up here. Uh, that pulls the, pulls the safeties out of the way and allows the bonnet to go up. Uh, so quite a bit of work ahead of us on that, but it's just, it's just nice to sort of go through these steps of actually getting everything to be really working to an acceptable level. You know, the, perhaps wasn't explained before about the bonnet latches, but the original bonnet latches is just a metal bar that just jams into these holes when you pu push the lever, which isn't, isn't particularly nice because there's nothing holding it downwards. It's just it's just free to kind of rattle within those those holes, and it, it did the trick. It worked, but with the uh, ability now to refine and improve things, we just want to take it to a slightly uh, higher level of execution and also make the underside of the bonnet look a lot prettier rather than having this sort of big assembly of box section and metal bars and things that were on there originally. Uh, so that's that. Uh, Camaro John has been pushing on with the early stages of build again. So the windscreen wiper mechanism, I think, I oh, forget the name of the company that make it. It was a kit that we bought during dry build, uh, rain gear, I believe. Uh, it, it basically relocates the wiper motor and mechanism to be completely within the scuttle area rather than having the motor in the engine bay. So because we'd already mocked that up before, that was just a case of fitting it. But it's quite awkward because there's lots of bits and you have to assemble them within the scuttle. Um, but that's in there now. He's got the vintage air heat slash aircon unit mounted in there, the hot water valve mounted. Uh, we're just mocking up uh, the AC and hot water pipes inside within the car, sort of from the bulkhead to that unit to get those made. And then he's going to move on to the ones on the outside. Uh, he started on the door builds as well. Handles and latches are in and locks. Uh, I think the boot lock is also in. Um, finished the fuel filler. So we, we previously, we had a, a new fuel filler pipe previously and it, was, it just doesn't line up with the tank basically. Um, so we had a go at modifying it previously. Actually ended up cutting it a bit too much out of it and thinking actually it'd be nice because they're only very cheap anyway we might as well wait until we're getting some more parts from summit racing and get another one and start again so we started again with another one did it did it correctly this time uh, so that's in fuel caps obviously on now as well uh, so yeah small steps forward we're ordering a complete new set of glass uh, this is a sort of classic example of when you get a car originally in that looks really tidy as this car did um, before we stripped it all down you sort of think everything's perfect on it and then actually having gone through the glass on it um, 
although none of it's horrendous, all of it has got some degree of very light scratching in it and the, the complete glass sets for these are pretty reasonably priced so it, we figured actually it makes sense to get all new glass so this is, that'll be a little bit of a hold up on finishing the door builds but there's plenty of other jobs we can get on with in the meantime. Um, so that's that and last of all for me, uh, the Land Cruiser two things on this we've finally got around to sorting this and we've kind of been putting this off for a long while the spare wheel carrier because it's not a particularly essential part of the car but we wanted to improve the hinges as we have on all the other hinges where we've machined our own hinges with bronze bushes etc um, we didn't want this to be just mild steel pins um, you know rubbing in a mild steel housing so we've used the original housings but we've reamed them out we've put nylon bushes in them and then machined a stainless steel pin same top and bottom, so it's stainless steel on nylon, the, the, the pivoting action. Uh, and then the latch part, it was again, it was just a loose latch on a metal pin, so they've changed that to being a shoulder bolt in a, in a phosphor bronze bush. Um, that all looks good now, so I think they were just mocking it up, trialling it all before we then pull it apart, paint the remaining bits, and then that'll be ready to go on. And then, excitingly, the inlet manifold. So uh, Richard at Autodesk organised the machining of the inlet manifold for this. Absolutely beautiful piece, incredibly machined. Um, it's two pieces because it's not possible to machine it as one uh, with an O-ring sort of um, join between the two. Uh, brought that over for a trial fit. There were actually a couple of little bits in the corner um, that just fouled on the water rail housing. Nothing significant. So we're just, they're just going to, they've just taken it back to just machine a little uh, pocket in each of the corners to clear that. Um, and then that'll be good to go on uh, once that's done. And, and it, as I say, it looks absolutely beautiful. So can't wait to see that on. And then that basically opens up all of the remaining jobs. So we can get the throttle body on, we can do the mounts for the fuel rails, um, we can do all the engine wiring, get the cam covers on. And then, yeah, that's basically the, uh, the engine bay part of the job done. So we'll be pretty much at the point of being able to fire this up then. But on that note, I'm going to hand over to Nat in the metal workshop uh, and I shall see you next week. Have a great weekend. Well, hello folks and welcome to another episode of Retro Power Uncut from the fabrication shop and the body shop. Although it's pretty much fabrication this week, uh, as you will see as we move on. So we'll start with Project Kimber. It's a bit escort flavoured, I'm afraid, again this week. Don't worry, we won't be fabricating escorts forever. So if you don't like it, bear with us. We will be moving on to some other cars soon. Uh, however, the focus this week has been chiefly escort and chiefly actually the other escort. There's lots of beavering away going on just out of camera. But on this one, amidst that beavering, we've, we keep hitting points where we can't have four people physically working on one car at once because we're all compromising each other's work areas. So at those points, Sam's been moving on to this car, uh, Project Kuma Escort, the second one. Uh, he's been getting on with the seam brazing on this, which we touched on before, he'd already started previously. He's carried on with that and got some more of that done. He's made the, I think they're fitted so I can't take them off, but the uh, front anti-roll bar brackets, which also carry the dry sump tank on this side, he's made those brackets as replicas of the ones on the other car. Uh, and been carrying on with any bit, other bits of fabrication that needed doing on this, but we're pretty much at the point now of this, where it needs to come off the jig, go onto the ramp, and have the, uh, the, the mock-up engine put in it so that we can do the finishing work underneath, which uh, I could actually point out on, on the other car in just a sec. So that's pretty much where we're at with the, um, the Project Puma Escort. Hammer foreman. Ah, yes, sorry, yes. <laughs> Jamie's just reminded me immediately uh, of what's going on behind me, which is that Tom's been working on this hammer form. Again, sporadically in between the work that he's work doing on, on the other Escort. When he can't get on with that one, he's been over here making a bit of progress on this. So uh, using the... Um, the, the front wing, I'm trying to remember which side this is. This is the offside front wing hammer form tool. Uh, he's made the rear section and he's just started on, he's cut the blank uh, here for the front section, for the front half of this. I'll just go and get, so I can wave it at camera, even though Jamie will have plenty of footage, I'll go and bring it over. So he's got the front, he's got the rear section of this to a stage where it now needs um, the, the, ed the, the edge area needs shrinking uh, and what the process that would be called setting, which is getting all this to sit uh, perfectly down onto the jig. 
so you can sort of see quite well how, how that sits on the jig, which is generally pretty well, but this skirt area tends to lift as you chase this, all of this tends to lift, so that, that's all got to be lowered down onto the jig, and to do that, this all needs shrinking. Uh, which is a, a pretty you know, standard uh, affair to do, but there's not really any point doing that until the other half's um, knocked in to the, to the stage this is at. So we've got the rough shape all there, then that can all be then pushed down, shrunk down so that it sits down flat onto the jig. And once all that's set, then they can be scribed out and welded, cut, cut and welded. So that, the, the, stage, uh, the stage is at is doing, getting this flat here to the stage that that one's at so that we can make up, that, that'll be one of the pair of front wings for this car, then we've got to do the same using the other front tool for doing the other side and then obviously both the uh, pairs of rears. So that's, work, that's what's going on with that, lots of hitting that chaser with that hammer, and lots of clamps and blocks of wood. So that's where, that's where uh, everything's at with that one. And moving on from that, we'll fleetingly pass uh, the uh, Redux D30 M3 here where Scott's bashing through the seam brazing. Basically, you'll notice there's a, a big seam brazing theme going on. Um, Scott's bashing on with the seam brazing on this, and that's progressing really well. He's getting through that. He's done various other little bits of fabrication um, in the boot for uh, tank for the washer tank fitment that lives in the boot. He's got that in place. Uh, he's made a, a guard, an alignment guide up because that was something that wasn't done on well, the first car is there's a, an alignment guide to position the mounting bosses for that tank in the boot uh, and that needed making so he's made that alignment guide done that and put the bosses uh, put the bosses into the boot and welded them in uh, on the back of this and then yeah the, the main job now is getting through the big long slog of uh, of all the seam brazing burning out any little bits of sealer that might be lurking in any seams that aren't completely clean and then just gradually going around it using the um the silicon bronze rod and, and getting it all seam brazed on this car, there's been progress on a number of fronts. Gaz has been, well, Gaz and Steve have been working on the lead work. So they've been working on the leading of the scuttle, uh, leading the scuttle the other side, which I think they've been on with. He'd done one side and just started this side at the beginning of this week. He's now done the other side here. He's got the sill transitions pretty much somewhere near uh, with lead as well. Uh, a little bit on the door apertures and screen aperture. I'm trying to remember now. I think there's a little bit on the rear screen aperture. Uh, and then there's some on the front wing on that side, which I mentioned in a previous episode. The wing wasn't quite the right shape, and there was a little bit of a revision needed on the, uh, on the front wing with some lead that side. So he's got that done. And then the other thing, if I can tip the car over, uh, ja Jamie will have the uh, footage of this anyway, but if I can just turn it over a bit, we'll be able to see the underside where there's a lot of seam brazing been occurring. You'll be able to see underneath on here, lots and lots and lots of seam brazing. Um, Sam's made up some capping sections here to finish off this. This is one of the pieces that needs fabricating on the other car that can't be done until we have the car on the lift which is the transmission cross member mount, which comes off here and here, which is not an original Escort piece. It's more similar to the Mark I, Cort Mark I and Mark II Cortina shells, the way that's done. Um, but we, that's how I've done the uh, transmission mounting on these, on these shells, with the, with the passageways for the fluid pipes to go through, and then two shear bosses each side, two shear tubes each side, sorry, crush tubes each side, mount the transmission cross member. That's all going to be done on the other shell. But anyway, yeah, Sam's made the finishing pieces for that, seam braised that and finished welded that in a few places where that needed doing. Uh, and then he's been carrying on doing all the rest of the under, underside seam brazing. And uh, that's progressing pretty well now. Uh, Tom's been on with making the finishing capping sections for the rear inner wheel arches, which are basically done now. So we've got a few more bits of finished welding to do, um, some more gussets to add to the rear subframe mounting pieces and lots and lots of other little odds and ends, little bits of weld that need dressing, various, various sort of odds and ends to tidy up under here that we've got to go through. We'll have a final look over it next week um, with, uh, with sort of a, a set of fresh eyes on it. We'll go over it all again next week when we think we've got everything done, do a final list of things that we've missed because there will be more things. And then I think, yes, at some point next week, we should be there in terms of all the fabrication. Just at this stage, it is quite a long slog of just chipping away at all the final finishing jobs and it does take a little while so bear with us on that we get in there moving on from that on to churchill jaguar stu's been working on metalwork on the inside i think jamie will have footage of it all i'm going to stand up here on this spare wheel um 
He, Stu's been working on these nifty little hinged stainless steel trays for mounting the twin uh, 16 channel PDUs and the main engine ECU. So they're all hinged under the dash. So they're held up by a, a wing nut uh, and the, the little threaded boss and wing nut that uh, retains them up under the dash. But when you want to access the wiring, you can hinge them down and the wiring plugs are accessible. Just make life a little bit easier in terms of installation of everything underneath the dash. So Stu's uh, designed those, cut them out in stainless, spot welded them all together, got them all working, got them installed and mounted the hinges for them onto the main dash cross tube. Uh, got all that sorted out. And then the other thing he's just been on with today is making the, in the centre, you can see that aluminium um, bracket there, that's going to carry the transmission controller on the um, transmission tunnel. He's needed to get on with that, he's got that done now. Um, the other thing to bear in mind is also Steve's been a bit poorly this week, he's been off earlier in the week, so it's not been a full week for him. We've had a, 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 bit, of a bit of a bug going around, which has taken out quite a few people last week and this week. Um, so yeah, that's why there's been a bit of an of absence of various faces that you might generally have seen because there's been a few people off ill. Uh, but yeah, Stu's got the uh, transmission controller bracket done. Uh, and he's gradually then just knocking off, knocking his way through all of the interior jobs and all of the, all of the small jobs and mountings for things and mounting bosses, wiring provisions, all of the other huge list of however many it was, 76 items I think, on the primary sort of uh, list of bits that need doing to facilitate building the car. Um, in terms of all the, all, the, all the parts that need doing during the fabrication stages to enable the car to be, uh, to be assembled later on and not need holes drilling and brackets adding later. So, yeah, that's pretty much where we're at on that. In terms of body work, as I say, the guys have been... Mark's been off because he's been really quite ill. He's been in hospital um, with, a, with, a, with, a bad, with a fairly bad stomach problem, with uh, the stomach bug. Uh, and then... Um, Steve and Gaz have been on lead work on the Escort, which we've kind of covered over there. So that pretty much covers it for in here. It's sort of, it's quiet in terms of the sum total of what was the sort of vehicles that are being worked on, but actually there's an awful lot of uh, effort being focused on one car, which was the, uh, the Project One Escort. So I think on that note, that pretty much sums up where we're at. And we'll see you again next week.